from Milwaukee. This is today's TMJ4, live at 10. Right now at 10, feeling like fall, temperatures plummet and rain returns for the weekend. Bundle up, lows are bottoming out tonight in the 40s. You know, three dog nights are supposed to be over with before late May, Brian. <laughs> this is very true. Uh, the good news is we're actually warmer right now than we were all day today. It's not saying much. It's 46 outside. Then, of course, you factor in the wind, which is still out of the northeast between 10 and 20. You have wind chills in the 30s. Here we are mid to late May, and we're talking wind chill of 35 in Burlington, 36 in Port. Feels like 41 right here in Milwaukee. So it's cold. It was sprinkling and light rain off and on throughout the day, and those winds were whipping out of the northeast. What we're watching now? This storm system, this is the one that brought the severe weather outbreak down in the Plains states yesterday and today. The snow yesterday in Colorado. The rain will be here by tomorrow morning, and it won't be a very pleasant day for tomorrow either. But right now, as I mentioned, it's 46 degrees, 47 by 3 a.m., 45 with a few showers moving in by 7 a.m., and it will be windy. Sunday, was it any better? you got to stick around for that. Okay, good tease. Thank you, Brian. Well, privacy concerns tonight for some BMO Harris Bank customers. They got tax documents in the mail this week, but it included personal information of other customers. One Plymouth man tells our Corrine Zell it happened to him, huh, Corrine? George and Carol, the customer says he and his wife called the bank this morning in search of answers. The couple is still waiting for the call back. A customer service representative promised them about 14 hours ago. On today's day of identity theft, you're kind of concerned by what information is out there about yourself, let alone receive somebody else's information unsolicited to you. When Don Liebenthal brought in the mail yesterday, a tax document from BMO Harris Bank addressed to his wife caught his eye. But on the bottom portion of the document was another person's information. A stranger's name, address, last four digits of a social security number, and account number, just below his wife's information. The bank told Liebenthal they're aware of the situation, and he says the customer service representative offered some advice. And they asked me to be a good citizen and just shred the document. The bank is calling this a processing issue. Officials tell us the mix-up impacted a limited number of customers, but wouldn't be specific. In a statement, the bank says it will be sending a letter explaining the situation and offering one free year of identity theft protection and credit monitoring. Information Liebenthal wishes the bank would have told him over the phone. Even this morning when I asked, they had no information of what they were going to do other than that the higher-ups were going to be looking at it. BMO says the piece of paper mailed out should have been cut and sent to two different people. This longtime customer is seriously thinking about switching banks. It's a good possibility, yes. In a statement, the bank says it is trying to figure out where the problem started. George and Carol. Thank you, Corrine. New at 10, a deadly designer drug confirmed for the first time here in Wisconsin. It's an opioid so potent it's resistant to the emergency overdose reversal treatment Narcan. Janesville police say they've discovered acryl fentanyl during recent investigations. People may not even know they're taking the stuff, believing they're instead using heroin. New dash cam video is showing exactly just how dangerous a chase turned through several North Shore communities. Rebecca Clough is live in Round Deer where this all began. Rebecca. Carol, it was here at this TJ Maxx where police first spotted the stolen car. It then took off, weaving in and out of traffic, even hitting a police squad at one point, and they still didn't stop. The Brown Deer police tried to pull over a stolen car Wednesday when it speeds off. From there, dash cam video shows just how wild it gets. The driver blows through the stop sign, misses a car, and drives on the wrong side of the street. And then, watch this. The driver goes right up onto the sidewalk, driving in between houses. The officer behind the wheel can't even give a location. When it gets too dangerous, the officer stops. But then is able to start the chase again later. Another officer joins in on Port Washington Road. You see the suspect vehicle weave around the sides of cars, accelerating over the 35 mile per hour speed limit. The driver pulls into a subdivision in Mequon, winds around the cul-de-sac, and that's where the crash ends for the officer. Her squad can't keep going. The chase eventually stopped again. The suspects, though, are found by Mequon police and arrested. 
Now the five suspects are all men ages between 16 and 18, and they all are facing charges. Reporting live in Brown Deer, Rebecca Clough, today's TMJ4. Dramatic stuff. Thanks, Rebecca. Playing with lives, a frightening new game is now appearing on Milwaukee streets. Young people putting other drivers at risk for fun. One Milwaukee alderman details a recent conversation between a young person and a local judge. Well, we're playing a new game in the city of Milwaukee. It's called Russian. And what do you mean by Russian? Well, we make a game about going through red lights and we speed through them. It's a game. So that's what's happening now on the streets of Milwaukee. Police data presented to the Public Safety Committee showed police pursuits are getting faster and suspects getting younger. The median age last year was only 18 years old. Police in St. Francis investigating a possible inappropriate relationship between a staff member and a student at St. Francis High School. The district saying the staff member is no longer employed at the school and there is no evidence of any inappropriate conduct at the school or at school-related activities. A man's killed in Kenosha County after the van he was driving slammed into the back of a school bus. The bus carrying Westosha Central High School students was stopped this morning in the town of Salem. Three students were sent to the hospital. I was just so scared that I just ran straight to the front of the bus and I started crying. Might seem obvious, but the cause of the crash remains under investigation. A deadly mistake. A Mequon man is sentenced to 39 years in prison for killing three women riding in an Uber. Jason Rondahawa was drunk at the time of that crash. He and a passenger ran from the scene. The damage that you have done to so many people is so great. The need to protect the public from you and from other people that might engage in this conduct is so high that a substantial sentence is absolutely required. Consult with your lawyer whether you follow. Rhonda Howe's defense plans to appeal the length of his sentence. A West Dallas man is charged with attempted murder accused of shooting an Amtrak conductor near Chicago. Police say 79-year-old Edward Klein fired out the window of a train Tuesday, hitting a conductor standing on the platform. Prosecutors say Klein was upset after an Amtrak staff member prevented him from getting off the train because it wasn't the right stop. Picking up the pieces, one woman is still in serious condition at the hospital after Tuesday's deadly tornado in Barron County. The sheriff's office says more than 230 properties were damaged by that storm. Still, no dollar amount of the cost. New at 10, fired FBI Director James Comey will testify in a public hearing before the Senate Intelligence Committee. His testimony to focus on his role in the investigation of Russian interference in the 2016 election. A date hasn't been set yet, but the hearing's expected to be scheduled sometime after Memorial Day. Well, President Trump reportedly expressed his relief to Russian diplomats over his firing of Comey. The New York Times is reporting President Trump told the Russians that firing the FBI director erased pressure from the agency's investigation. It allegedly happened during an Oval Office visit. Trump also called Comey, quote, a real nut job, according to a document summarizing that meeting. Now, the president is kicking off his first international trip in office. He's in Saudi Arabia tonight, where he plans to deliver a speech on Islam. A man tried to break through a cockpit door on an American Airlines flight today from Los Angeles to Hawaii. Crew members tackled him and secured him to a seat with duct tape. The 25-year-old was arrested hours earlier for opening a door that led from an airport terminal to an airfield ramp. Police say he had been drinking. Well, soon the circus will not be coming to town. After this weekend, an American tradition with Wisconsin roots will be history. Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus is putting on its final show Sunday in New York. The greatest show on earth began in Baraboo back in 1884. The second jewel of horse racing's Triple Crown will be contested tomorrow. It all takes place at Baltimore's Pimlico Raceway. Ten horses will break from the gate in the 142nd running of the Preakness Stakes. No surprise, the overwhelming favorite is Kentucky Derby victor, Always Dreaming. Shortly before sunrise this morning, Kentucky Derby winner Always Dreaming strolled from the stakes barn at Pimlico Raceway to the same deep, sandy track where Secretariat set a Preakness record in 1973 that still stands today. The prohibitive favorite galloped well in the mornings all week. Trainer Todd Pletcher's been upbeat about his charge since the colt joined his stable. The Always Dreaming has tremendous mechanics. He's got a great, great rhythm to his stride. He just, he continually impressed us throughout the winter. 
consistently trained really, really well. His breezes were very, very impressive. And each race just seemed to be getting better and better. Always Dreaming will be in the four post. Right next to him will be arguably the best horse of this generation, Classic Empire. Both horses have won key victories in the slop, but slop shouldn't be an issue tomorrow. I don't think there's going to be enough rain in the forecast right now to give us a sloppy or a muddy racetrack on Saturday. And it looks like the rain is out of here by Saturday. I hope that forecast holds out, though. Ten will go, one will win. Will we have a shot at the Triple Crown at Belmont? We'll find out on Saturday. Incidentally, Classic Empire and Always Dreaming have the same granddaddy, Empire Maker. Coverage of the Preakness Stakes begins at 4 o'clock right here on today's TMJ4. Well, still ahead on Live at 10, a stitch in time. He's not in the military, but he's transformed local soldiers for years. Why, he says, it's time to go. Plus, why a woman dressed in a T-Rex costume was so scary, she's now facing charges. And surfs up the strange save from rising floodwaters. The Tonight Show is next. Here's Jimmy. You're watching today's TMJ4 with Carol Meekins, George Mallet, Storm Team 4 meteorologist Brian Goddard, and Lance Allen Sports. A Tennessee man hopped on a surfboard to rescue his in-laws from floodwaters. Now video shows him paddling to their house with a small boat dragging behind him. His in-laws jump off the roof and he paddles back to dry land. Parts of Tennessee got up to six inches of rain in just a short period of time. Good son-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> After more than 100 years of statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee no longer standing over the city of New Orleans, a crane lifted it from its perch today. It is the fourth monument to the Confederacy the city has removed in the past few weeks. The mayor saying the statues ignore the enslavement and terror the Confederacy stood for. Well, a Tyrannosaurus Rex is blamed for a crash in South Carolina. A woman dressed in a T-Rex costume was walking in downtown Charleston. As a horse-drawn carriage got close, the woman in the costume reportedly made growling noises at the horse, spooking them. The driver was thrown from the carriage. He suffered a broken foot. They just perceived a threat that they had never seen before, and they reacted in that moment, but they calmed down just as quickly as they reacted. Now, the woman in the costume left before police arrived. She turned herself in today, and she was cited for disorderly conduct. Well, a beloved Milwaukee business has survived generations and has been around for years, but it's about to close its doors. Katie Crowther takes us to Hans Billerbeck and his tailor shop. Hans Billerbeck is an expert at what he does, a master of every machine. So steam, dry. Then you're done, you do the other leg. I'm a very fussy tailor. It's gotta be done perfect. A perfectionist still at how old? I'm not bad for 72, right? Yeah, you look great. <laughs> is the camera running? Yeah. Oh, I'm not. lying, I'm lying. Hans <laughs> is really 80. He came here from Germany at the age of 21 to be the head of tailoring at St. John's Military Academy. 50 years ago, he opened his own shop. And through his career, he's done all the tailoring for local military and ROTC programs. And when they switched over from, from this color to this color, I did over 5,000 shirts. I'm very proud of him. I don't think he realizes how valuable he's been to the area. Sharon is his partner in life and business. They met at a dance and have been married 51 years, raising two children. It was obvious with his wonderful waltzes that he was going to take my heart and soul. Together, they're packing up the years of memories and all the tools. Customers stop in to say goodbye. Thanks for all the Over the years, they've learned it's Han's way or no way. He'd often tell them. I have to do it the right way, and I don't think your way is the right way. And they love him for it. He takes his work seriously. Even at home, Sharon often catches him yelling at the TV. And he's standing and yelling at the newscasters, the men saying, hey, You've got a three button coat on. You're only supposed to button two. Now he can't help but get emotional, turning off that open sign for the last time. The best part is uh, treating customers just right, doing a good job. I just appreciate uh, all the good, good customers I have and, and uh, I have to say thank you. Katie Crowther, today's TMJ4. Well, congratulations to Hans, and he plans to spend more time with his family in retirement. In 50 years, he's never taken more than a week off at a time, and he's a perfectionist. I wonder if he ever yelled at you. <laughs> Check yourself.
<laughs> Hans, give us a call. We could you we could use some help. Just check it. <laughs> Well, a rainy, cool day leading into the weekend. Let's take a live <laughs> look outside through the lens of our Mar Marquette Tower Cam. Being a Tower Cam is a great job until it's cold and wet <laughs> and breezy. Nice picture, though, huh, Brian? It looks absolutely beautiful. Chilly up there on the tower, though. It sure is. That's why I came back inside. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, are we okay over here, yeah. too? I mean, it's like, whew. Hey, look good to me, but, you know, I'm no detail person. You got, you got <laughs> the right the button unbuttoned there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> We're all good. I uh, hope you had a great Friday despite the weather. Holy cow, things just went south in a hurry. In the 40s all day, it was windy, rainy at times as well. 41 was the morning low in Milwaukee, upper 30s elsewhere. Uh, yeah, upper 30s for some lows this morning. Look at this roller coaster ride the past seven days. Remember Tuesday, hot, humid, 87, had some thunderstorms. Wednesday, 84, thunderstorms. Yesterday, 75. Today, we dropped to 46, and that 46 is right now. We're the warmest we have been all day. We've had wind chills in the 30s throughout the day. This is what we're watching. As you can see, there's rain coming in. This is the system that brought the severe weather to the south of us uh, yesterday. It brought the snow into Colorado yesterday as well. We're not going to see just continuous rain for tomorrow, but it will be here by morning off and on throughout the afternoon and then another round tomorrow evening. So get ready for kind of a just a dreary day. Second day in a row, unfortunately, the Goddard gauge is at a two. Probably could have gave it a one today. Cloudy, damp and rainy at times. Temperatures in the mid 50s, so at least a little bit warmer with rain likely. Your current temperatures, I mentioned 46, the warmest we've been all day. 40s elsewhere. You have that wind out of the northeast. It was up to 30 miles per hour earlier today. Now between 10 and 20 and there's still wind chills out there this hour in the 30s. It feels like 35 in Burlington. You were close to 90 the other day. 34 in Lake Geneva. It feels like 38 in Watertown and 40 in Waukesha. Our temperatures will hold steady overnight. We'll stay in the mid to upper 40s. Northeast winds at 10 to 15. So yes, when you wake up, there'll be a little bit of wind chill and there will be some scattered rain showers starting to move in. There could be some here before 9 a.m. But for the most part, coming in from the south after 9 or 10 o'clock, Midday hours will be the best chance of rain up until around 2 or 3. Then it lifts to the north. We'll get a little bit of a break before more rain moves in here overnight tomorrow night. For, uh, excuse me, Sunday, partly to mostly cloudy. The rain moves out. Still going to be mostly cloudy, and it's going to be windy, but out of the southwest, and that'll help us warm up. How much rain are we talking about? Between now and about tomorrow evening, about a half inch of rain, and then another half inch of rain or more tomorrow night as that second wave pushes on through. So here's your weekend forecast. Tonight, we're looking for a low of 44. Tomorrow, rainy at times, 55. Could even hear some rumbles of thunder. And then 63 on Sunday with that southwesterly wind at 10 to 15. Doing some traveling around the state. The middle part of the state looks to be the wettest and the coolest with temperatures in the 40s and the 50s. So once again, here's your seven-day forecast. 55 tomorrow with on and off again rain. Could hear some rumbles of thunder. Still kind of cloudy on Sunday, but the rain's out of here in 63. Can get out there and do some yard work. 70 on Monday. Thunderstorms on Tuesday and 60 degrees, and we will stay uh, upper 50s to lower 60s Wednesday and Thursday. So not, not a terrible weekend. Tomorrow, not the greatest. I mean, as a parent who's going to be watching softball tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but we do anything for our kids, right? <laughs> That's right. It doesn't matter about the weather, just the little darlings. <laughs> right. Thank you, Brian. Coming up next, Lance Allen shows us how the Brewers hit one out of the park against the Cubs today at Wrigley Field. This may not last forever, but as of now, the Brewers beat the world champion Cubs and continue to show the rest of the National League Central that they are for real. What a great story. After 11 years in the minors, Paolo Espino makes his major league debut, goes four solid innings, one solid highlight for the Cubs. Look at Kyle Schwarber, Rob Keon Broxton and left. After a rain delay, the Brewers still take care of business. Domingo Santana, two RBI single in the sixth. Former starter Willie Peralta strikes out five in two innings of relief and gets the win. The Brewers tee it up and hit it out for a 6-3 win against the Cubs. Well, today at Wrigley, I caught up with Eric Sogard. Life on the field is very good. Off the field, his daughter Sadie is an even bigger star after Eric's wife Casey took this video of their, very, uh, their daughter very distraught after a loss to the Padres. If a three-year-old could handle it, it's her. I mean, she's, uh, you know, the most outgoing girl I know, and, you know, she's uh, the light of my life, and, um, you know, it's neat to see her. I didn't know she cared so much about winning and losing already at age three, but, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's fantastic, especially the way the Padres treated her, bringing her cupcakes and whatnot. 
Um, and that's amazing, just the outpouring of support uh, on any social medium and then just seeing her and the, the, the true emotion of a kid. I know, I love it. And I mean, that's what I get to deal with every day, just the, the highs and lows, obviously. Daddy hit his home run and then the Padres hit a home run. But, you know, it's, there's nothing better about it uh, being a dad, so I'm, I'm grateful to have her. Sogard's already very popular in Milwaukee after a week. In our next segment of sports, Brewers GM David Stearns and how Eric Thames is passing the test so far. Oh. Welcome back. After his hot start, Eric Thames already tested at least three times during Major League Baseball's drug program. GM David Stearns not pleased with the rumor mill. Unfortunately, it appears to be the natural course in our game right now. I, I don't um, think it's necessarily right. Um, uh, I think Eric has handled it very well, um, and and the truth is we have the toughest testing program of any professional sports in the world, um, and Eric is subject to that just like everyone else's. And um, so far, Eric has has proven that he's doing this completely naturally, and that's that's certainly what we believe. And Kyle Petty's charity ride stopped at the Harley Davidson Museum tonight. The NASCAR announcer for NBC says Milwaukee holds a spot near and dear to his heart. I've been riding, rode a sports to when I was in school, been riding Harleys my whole life. So it's kind of like my dad. He always run those Dodges and those Chrysler products. I got to ride Harley. Great to see Harley and great to see that old Richard Petty race car. When you see breaking news, call the today's TMJ4 tip line or email news at TMJ4.com. Brought to you by Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Sure, the BMW X3 can blast over snowy mountains, kick up dust trails in the desert, or wade through oceans of mud. But with looks like these, sometimes you just want to keep it clean. And there's nothing wrong with that. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Lisa BMW X3 xDrive 28i for $4.19 a month. We traveled to Liberty, Texas, where one woman provides therapeutic riding at no cost to children with special needs. She does a lot for her kids, and for her to do it for free for children with disabilities, that is amazing. We are here to celebrate and honor you. <laughs> Thank you. Treat the hero in your life to a fresh frozen custard, Culver's Concrete Mixer. I wanted to make a difference in the community. To Donna, our hero. Come to Culver's to celebrate your hero. At Menards, home improvement means saving big because right now you'll get an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices. Get a healthy, beautiful lawn with Turf Champ grass seed. Three-pound bags of sunny or shade grass seed are $4.98 each after rebate. Create an attractive outdoor space with concrete patio blocks. 12 by 12 inch smooth face blocks are 88 cents each after rebate. Stop waiting and start saving with an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Announcing Hyundai's Better Than Ever sales event. Come in now for the biggest savings in our 30-year history on select new Hyundais. Like up to 4250 total savings on the 2017 Elantra. Really? Wow. And every new Hyundai comes with an amazing warranty. America's best warranty. Hurry in before the best offers in Hyundai history are, well, history. Better is the reason to buy Hyundai. Better than ever is the reason to buy now. Lease the Elantra for $109 a month or get up to 4250 in total savings. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Tonight's Mega Millions numbers, 1, 4, 5, 24, 30. 1 is the Mega Ball, the Mega Flyer, times 3. And I was honored to be the keynote speaker today at the graduation luncheon for seniors at St. Joan Antietam High School. It was at the Women's Club, a wonderful lunch. Congratulations to all the young people, the staff. Great conversation, and they have a wonderful foundation for success. So thank you very much. We're honored to have you. Well, I was honored to be there. I'm honored to sit next to you every <laughs> night. What about the weather? Are you honored about this? No. A rain tomorrow, <laughs> Sunday's a better of the two days. Okay. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> Done. A good time. <laughs>